Well, we might as well get started. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our environmental special edition of the Environmental Sustainability Task Force. Um, this evening, we're joined by Andrew Cooley, our Director of Communications and our uh, sort of technical support today. Uh, you all have met uh, Joe Minnick, Assistant Superintendent of Finance and Operations. And we're joined by Shante Langford, our uh, Executive Director for Human Resources at Ann Arbor Public Schools. And um, she will be uh, kind of uh, facilitating our interviews this evening with our candidates. And she'll uh, take a minute, overview the process, and then we'll bring in our first of our two candidates. And uh, that's our agenda for the evening. Uh, take it away, Shante. All right, good evening and welcome everyone, uh, trustees and the Environmental Sustainability Task Force. What a cool name that you all have. It sounds like a cool group to be a part of. Um, this evening, we will be bringing before you two candidates um, just to go back a little bit, um, we had approximately, I believe, eight candidates apply for this position. We selected four of those eight for a first round um, interview. Those interviews occurred right before spring break, um, and we narrowed it down to two candidates, which you will see this evening. Um, the candidates will come before you this evening. They will do a 20 to 30 minute presentation. The presentation is a 30, 60, 90 day entry plan um, with an equity focus. After that, uh, we will ask, or I will ask three questions that we already have prepared here of each candidate, um, and they'll have 15 minutes to respond to those questions. Um, we want to make sure that we stay in process um, and ask each candidate the same exact questions. Um, there will not be additional questions asked and so forth. Um, and I think that that is pretty much it. Yep, I'll just, I'll just add that um, we did email to this group, a uh, Google form um, that uh, you can, any comments, thoughts, ideas, uh, additional questions um, for each candidate, feel free to enter that into the Google form and that will be uh, reviewed by subsequent um, uh, interview committees. And I'm just going to drop it into the chat. So if you didn't get it or not sure where it is, you'll have it handily or accessible to you. And the last thing I think I would add is just that this is being recorded this evening and that we will be releasing it um, to the public hopefully tomorrow um, to get this out so everyone's able to view it who would like to do so. Mr. Cluley is our first candidate here. Yes, I will bring him in in one second. Mr. Bing, are you able to hear us yet? There you are. Yes, hello, can you hear me okay? We can hear you okay. Welcome okay. this evening. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for joining us. So Mr. Bing, um, as I just explained to the committee, this evening we will allow you to begin with your uh, presentation, which uh, we've allotted 20 to 30 minutes for you to, to do. After you're done, if you can, grab a cup of water if you need to real quick. We'll go into three questions that we have prepared for you and you'll have 15 minutes to ask, or to, I'm sorry, to answer those questions. Um, do you have any questions before we get started? Uh, no, just uh, wanna confirm that I'll be sharing screen here. Is that right? Okay. That is correct. Um, and for our audience, this is Jason Bing, who is our first candidate here. And I'm sure he will introduce himself throughout his presentation. It's all yours, Mr. Bing. All right. So let me share the screen here. All right. All right. Well, thank you, uh, trustees. Thank you, um, AAPS colleagues, uh, thank you, Environmental Sustainability Task Force members. Um, I am Jason Bang, and I am thrilled to be a candidate uh, for Director of Environmental Sustainability uh, here with you uh, this evening. Um, and you are seeing my slides advance, just to, just quick. Yep. Okay. So 
I've spent the last uh, 20 years uh, working on clean energy and environmental sustainability solutions uh, with almost 10 years focused on public schools in Ann Arbor and throughout the state of Michigan. I have the planning program design and delivery experience to get the job done. And I'm uniquely positioned to hit the ground running. I know our AAPS organizational structure, our procurement methods, our capital bond program, our Freeman Environmental Education Center initiatives. And I've built important relationships within district departments that will help me get to doing the hard work sooner. I've had the privilege to be a part of the AAPS Environmental Sustainability Task Force team here and the process towards developing our district plan. On top of that, I've built an important network here in environmental sustainability community here in Ann Arbor. Uh, from my work with Recycle Ann Arbor uh, to my time serving on the City of Ann Arbor Energy Commission, um, being on the board of directors of the Appropriate Technology Collaborative and my time with the Ecology Center. I believe my, my network and local experience will be another tool and resource uh, to bring to APS, uh, our students, our staff, and community um, as we build success in environmental sustainability. Um, so we're here to talk about my 30, 60, 90 day plan. Um, we've got a series of underlying documents uh, and key principles that are feeding into that plan, which I'll uh, quickly review. But the overall uh, 30, 60, 90 day plan is structured into four uh, priorities. Priority one being the environmental sustainability management plan. This is the critical path piece that really builds the work plan for our director of environmental sustainability here. Um, we've got priority 2A and 2B. Uh, it's a benchmarking and baselining step, uh, building out our greenhouse gas inventory and our environmental sustainability kind of current inventory initiatives. Uh, this will help set the foundation for building out measurable outcomes through our environmental sustainability management planning process. Uh, priority 3A and B are our communications plan, uh, both an internal uh, engagement plan and in an external outreaching uh, plan. And priority four, uh, current, excuse me, uh, uh, our current uh, ongoing and short-term environmental sustainability initiatives. Um, so <clears throat> I've really sort of built uh, an overall plan, which um, is essentially in general, the first 30 days, I'm really gonna be focused on uh, conversations, information gathering, data collecting, uh, which will feed a, a recommendations action planning process within those 60 days and then 90 days uh, getting all the necessary sort of approvals in place to move into uh, implementation uh, within those uh, four priority areas. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, quite a few acronyms um, in my slides just as sort of a space saver here. So I wanted to include those um, in the presentation. Um, and to the guiding documents and key principles that are feeding into uh, the 30, 60, 90 day uh, plan, we've got our AAPS Board of Education Policy 8000, Environmental Sustainability, uh, implemented in 2018. We've got our Environmental Sustainability Task Force charge and our current working process documents. Uh, we've got our 2019 bond campaign and bond plan. We've got our recommendations provided by the Environmental Sustainability Advisory Committee in 2019, our recommendations presented by the Freeman Environmental Education Center Advisory Committee uh, in 2019, and our AAPS equity plan. So priority one, um, Environmental Sustainability Management Plan. Um, my slides are really organized uh, left to right, uh, organized by task uh, in that 30, 60, 90 day progression. So I'm gonna start here at task Task one, uh, within the first 30 days, we need to clarify and confirm our overall plan development process. We need to really map our progression and our anticipated outcomes and timelines uh, with leadership, get on the same page, so that within 90 days, uh, we can work with our environmental sustainability task force on an overall format and package uh, for presenting um, recommendations to the board which is sort of an agreed upon format. 
and then we can move on the outs then um, into uh, recommendations and building an environmental sustainability framework uh, to present to our board. Uh, tasks two and three are really about uh, facilitating this process. So facilitating the environmental sustainability task force meetings, uh, the coordination invitations, I'm going to be participating in our environmental sustainability task force working group breakout meetings uh, with the intent there that we want to provide the tools and templates that align with the package that we would like to present uh, to the board so that in the end we're developing targets and timelines in an environmental sustainability management plan framework that then provides the, the foundation for the work plan um, for the Director of Environmental Sustainability. So priority one, sort of high level takeaways. It's really important to establish our key goals, performance indicators uh, and timelines within the Environmental Sustainability Task Force process. Um, and we really want to consider establishing uh, through this process and, and moving forward um, pathways for internal stakeholder feedback uh, so that AAPS team members can also participate um, in developing sort of our step-by-step -step actions that lead us to our measurable outcomes. Our priority 2A then is our benchmarking baselining, building out our greenhouse gas inventory. Again, a critical step in order to create uh, measurable outcomes uh, related to carbon here. So task one, uh, collecting all of the utility data and fuel use information, uh, organizing that information or solid waste information uh, within those first 30 days so that and at the end of 90 days, we have draft reports available and presented to leadership, um, which would include our greenhouse gas uh, inventory and uh, alongside our operating costs. So on the outside of 90 days then, we're really building a foundation for, uh, again, developing district goals and targets and tracking uh, greenhouse gases alongside operating costs. Uh, tasks two and three in this priority area are really about um, selecting the greenhouse gas inventory protocol that allows us to build alignment with our community partners so that when we go ahead and um, create this inventory, we're utilizing, um, we're able to leverage and integrate already developed municipal um, and institutional partner tools and resources. For example, the city of Ann Arbor has offered um, to allow us to utilize their local government operations protocol spreadsheets um, so that we can actually sort of leapfrog uh, and, and kind of jump a step in needing to, to sort of develop some of that infrastructure and kind of the, the co-benefits of doing that would allow us to not only track all of this internally within district, but also all of our information then could roll up into a larger uh, community tracking database. Uh, so high level takeaway again, it's important um, here to track carbon alongside our operating costs. And it's going to be important to develop regular external meetings with our community partners to coordinate the greenhouse gas inventory, uh, make sure we're aligning with our environmental sustainability management plan and staying uh, consistent with broader community goals. Priority 2B, uh, benchmarking baselining the current uh, environmental sustainability initiatives. Uh, task one is within the first 30 days here, task one and two. We want to be developing a strategy for collecting data of current initiatives happening on sort of two levels, on the district-wide level uh, and building level, um, so that within 90 days, we have an inventory available uh, that includes uh, current initiatives at building and district level, and we're noting and tracking um, what sort of impacts folks are currently tracking so that we might build out uh, further metrics and further uh, resources and tools to support the current initiatives and then build those into uh, potentially our environmental sustainability uh, management plan. So on the outside of 90 days, we wanna be able to um, 
build out some district-wide tools uh, to help document the impacts of our current ongoing initiatives, and then uh, really be starting to build the groundwork for uh, potential green team uh, support within the district. So task three, um, we have an opportunity uh, to start to collaborate uh, early with our environmental ed and teaching and learning teams, um, just by doing some data gathering, understanding, um, what sort of existing uh, environmental sustainability curriculum and tools may currently be in place. Uh, so within the first 30 days there of task three, we're going to work with them. Uh, hopefully, uh, there may be some existing inventory or some tools that we might be able to then kind of roll up into our bigger, broader uh, inventory of current initiatives happening at the district and building levels. And really, this just builds a foundation for uh, conversations around environmental sustainability, curriculum expansion, and integration. Uh, so at a high level, uh, priority 2B, what we're looking to, to do is build the foundation for building out district uh, and building level green teams. And we want to uh, create opportunities uh, for to start the conver conversation for collaboration within the environmental ed and Freeman Environmental Education Center. Priority 3A, uh, environmental sustainability communications um, and internal facing engagement plan. Uh, sort of task one is really about creating all of the regular meetings, the uh, internal conversations that are necessary to start to begin a plan, essentially task two, develop the strategy um, with leadership internally uh, for how we then at 90 days implement a communications and engagement plan. At the outside of 90 days, we really want to be thinking about building a culture of engagement uh, with our internal stakeholders so we can celebrate environmental sustainability at the district and building level consistently. Uh, task three. Um, we start to, to build out some communications through announcing the director of environmental sustainability position, leveraging that to build uh, some introductory meetings and uh, use those meetings to identify building level champions. Uh, so within 90 days, we have uh, district and building level communication and feedback tools sort of starting to be in place um, in regular communication set up. So at a high level here for priority 3A, we want to establish pathways for internal stake, stakeholder feedback and participation. And we want to be able to regularly celebrate successes with our AAPS team. A consideration for the overall uh, management plan or the overall engagement plan in this step, I think, is thinking about uh, how AAPS may benefit from uh, an environmental sustainability leadership team or, or green council as a strategy uh, within our uh, internal communications plan and our environmental sustainability management plan. Priority 3B, our environmental sustainability communications and outreach plan, external facing plan. Again, we want to start uh, task one here by announcing the director of environmental sustainability to our community stakeholders uh, so that within 90 days here we can develop a draft communication plan that includes outreach, uh, consistent outreach to community stakeholders. It aligns with the internal plan, uh, complements the internal plan, and then on the outside of 90 days, we're providing regular updates, bulletins, and reports. Uh, we're sharing data uh, with broader community reporting needs, and we are um, building out an external-facing dashboard with uh, key metrics so that uh, folks can track um, our measurable uh, progress. And uh, within task two here, really we're um, trying to get at the idea that we can build out uh, our environmental sustainability management plan and some of our uh, internal initiatives so that we, we can think about how we um, build recognition of our, of our activities. So how can we look for award programs, recognition programs, align some of our current initiatives 
uh, with the outcomes that we're looking for in, uh, for example, the Green Ribbon Schools programs or Michigan Green Schools? Can we think about ways that we can align our uh, initiatives so that we are regularly recognized by local and national organizations for the work we're doing here at AAPS? So on a high level, um, Takeaways here, we want to attend uh, regular external meetings with key um, community stakeholders. We want a communications plan that reflects an internal and an external approach, uh, staying grounded in our AAPS mission and the Environmental Sustainability Management Plan. And it's important to, that we celebrate and we communicate uh, successes in order to build uh, momentum. Priority four our environmental sustainability ongoing short-term initiatives. We wanna support the work that's currently taking place. Uh, so task one here is starting in, in the first 30 days, reviewing current Freeman Environmental Education Center initiatives and planning documents with the environmental ed team. Uh, so that within 90 days, we're looking to present a draft plan for collaboration and support of the environmental ed team and Freeman Environmental Education Center to leadership. Uh, on the outs of 90 days, then we're looking at uh, a director of environmental sustainability and environmental ed team working together to implement Freeman Environmental Education Center initiatives uh, alongside the environmental sustainability management plan and regularly reporting successes together. Task two, continue our clean energy efforts, our solid waste efforts, our outdoor learning uh, environment initiative efforts, um, provide support, and within 90 days, present a draft plan for uh, longer term collaboration and support of AAPS internal departments, so physical properties, capital projects, transportation, um, and, and many more to leadership so that after 90 days um, or during 90 days and beyond, uh, the Director of Environmental Sustainability and AAPS departments are working together to implement projects that support the Environmental Sustainability Management Plan and reporting out our successes together. And task three then, uh, within 30 days, we're gonna review the bond plan with leadership, look for opportunities for alignment within the Environmental Sustainability Management Plan, uh, we want to then, uh, within 90 days, present a draft plan for collaboration and support of the bond plan through the Environmental Sustainability Management Plan. And really, the goal here is to figure out how we can align the Freeman Environmental Education Center initiatives, the bond plan, and the Environmental Sustainability Management Plan, um, so we're all, again, uh, working together. Uh, the higher level takeaway here then is uh, we at Ann Arbor Public Schools have an incredibly unique opportunity with just tools that most districts really can't even imagine through our environmental education team and our bond plan. So, uh, amazing opportunities um, and um, something that we need to really embrace and look for uh, consistent alignment with. So, these are my uh, first sort of four priorities. There's a ton of work to do uh, within 90 days and beyond. Um, this isn't a comprehensive list uh, by any means of all the activities that need to take place between now and 90 days, but um, these are the four priority areas that I um, mapped out here. So um, in closing, um, as we are nearing Earth Day, I think it's important that we reflect on where we find ourselves here in 2022. At a high level, as many of you are well aware, we are in a climate crisis. And the city of Ann Arbor and Washtenaw County have declared climate emergencies as a result. The most recent Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report is alarming and continues a now decades long alarming trend. There is a way forward and it is our choice now as to whether we want to be part of a system of change that is characterized by consistent and coordinated strategic mitigation and adaptation, or a system of change that is characterized by some relative chaos and reaction. Science tells us that change is coming regardless. 
to find the resolve to move forward, we might look at where we have been and where we come from as a district and community. As our environmental team, or as our environmental ed team uh, will tell you, one of AAPS's own, Mr. Bill Stapp, actually wrote the book on environmental education in 1965. On top of that, Ann Arbor and U of M was home to one of the country's largest Earth Day teach-ins and rallies in 1970. And Recycle Ann Arbor established Michigan's first curbside recycling program in 1978. This community is known for groundbreaking efforts on environmental justice, toxic pollution activism, and so much more. With our bond plan, our phenomenal environmental education program, and the commitments already made from our community partners, the City of Ann Arbor, Washtenaw County, and University of Michigan, we have a once in a generation opportunity that we must fully embrace. As Director of Environmental Sustainability, I would encourage our leadership to continue to be bold, make no small plans for environmental sustainability in the AAPS. Our students, staff, and community offer us exceptional hope in the face of a climate emergency. We need to do what we can to ensure that we are preparing our students for a future not filled with uncertainty, but a future in which they can thrive. Thank you so much uh, for the time tonight, and I really appreciate the opportunity. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Bing. Um, if you wanna stop share there, and if you need to grab a glass of water or a cup of water, feel free to do so. <laughs> we will go right into our questions here next. Um, and as I stated at the beginning of the presentation or the beginning of the meeting, um, you will have 15 minutes to answer these three questions. All right, all set? Sure. All right. So please describe how you approach managing institutional change in a complex environment with multiple internal and external stakeholders. All right, thank you for that question. Um, I believe um, that complex organizational change certainly starts with a thoughtful and careful plan, uh, which is uh, why, again, I think first priority was developing that environmental sustainability management plan uh, within my piece. I've been through um, the strategic planning process now uh, with five different organizations, um, the Energy Commission, Recycle Ann Arbor, and Energy Works Michigan, uh, Ecology Center, and Appropriate Technology Collaborative. Um, change is um, difficult, and uh, it really starts with um, that thoughtful, thoughtful, careful plan that's developed in an open and transparent way um, that really focuses on building trust um, the change management process, I believe, is, uh, is starts with um, basically it's building trust at the beginning, middle, and the end of the process. Um, so uh, you start with a start with a plan, um, make that uh, open and transparent. Um, you create a roadmap for your internal stakeholders for engagement. You communicate often. Um, invite feedback, uh, and you uh, continue to revise, uh, learn, and adapt, and um, keep moving forward uh, with celebrating um, successes, every success along the way. Um, you know, the there is going to be opportunities for uh, bigger wins within a change process, um, but in many cases, uh, it might start with small victories that you can leverage into bigger and bigger wins um, through building momentum. Um, I think there is, uh, I've shared this previously, but um, participating in a couple uh, different systems thinking uh, sort of workshops, I've been introduced to this idea that things are not what they appear in an organization. So you might uh, be able to understand sort of how a department is described or what an organizational chart looks like. Um, but until you actually try to uh, change that system, you don't really know how it operates. So the approach here is, you know, understanding that, um, 
when you do uh, go to change, there are some folks that you may have believed were going to be receptive to your um, approach or receptive to the plan that are end up being resistant. And you will find that there are some folks that are resistant that you anticipated would be resistant are actually receptive. But I think the pace of change is certainly something that um, needs to be considered so that we are uh, thoughtful and we're meeting people where they're at um, and consistently then pushing forward um, you know, and providing folks with tools and training and resources that are needed in order to keep, uh, keep moving forward. All right, thank you. Question number two, please discuss how you have approached environmental sustainability from the perspective of equity and inclusion and how you would include this in your work at AAPS. Thank you for the question. I'm I think, um, you know, it's been nice working for AAPS and, and an organization that has an equity plan. So, excuse me, that would be the kind of important starting point uh, for our work here in environmental sustainability. Um, you know, our equity plan sort of clearly um, states that we all have a, a moral responsibility uh, to create an environment for our school community, our partners, uh, free from barriers and biases and disproportionality, uh, regardless of who they are or personal characteristics or, or circumstances. Um, and that's, you know, a, a foundational piece moving forward for our environmental sustainability in the district. I think, you know, to within our pillared sort of approach, the five pillars there, there's um, some pretty clear direction, that, you know, leadership means not only confronting your own bi biases, but uh, helping others to confront theirs. Um, and I think understanding uh, within the context of sustainability that you might have uh, some really great ideas and really great opportunities for, for people um, to embrace. Uh, but if they're not sort of ready and able to, um, you know, sort of embrace those ideas or take them on, then you, you're, you're likely going to have to meet them where they're at um, and help them um, sort of get to the place where they can uh, embrace uh, ideas. One uh, quick uh, example or, or the, the example that I hold um, for equity or envir environmental justice and, and equity is my work with the Appropriate Technology Collaborative. I was um, lucky enough to go down to Guatemala to help our executive director on a, a trip with U of M engineers who are helping to uh, design systems for uh, folks in Guatemala. Um, in particular, they were providing uh, a solar panel paired with an LED light which would replace a kerosene lamp in you know, very small confined um, uh, quarters for, fo for folks where they were living. It was a, a wonderful solution because you know, you've got a kerosene lamp uh, burning in a small house, which you know, created a bunch of toxic pollution and created issues for folks. And you had this issue of the light being too dim and, you, and nobody could study at night. You couldn't do a second job at night. You couldn't do stuff to sort of build yourself up. So the solution was, was fantastic, but we took it to a particular village in Guatemala that did not have access to regular water. So what happened was, is our, you know, we, we came here with a solution, with an opportunity that would address a particular problem. But what ended up happening is that the team of engineers, additional engineers had to get involved to actually address a regular water supply um, for the village first before we could um, think about um, moving on to this, you know, sort of next step. 
uh, next level. And I think of that just in, in terms of um, understanding that, you know, you might have a great idea and it might might seem like a, a big win, but unless you really understand the situation on the ground, who you're working with, what their needs are, um, you're not going to be able to, to deliver. Uh, so. All right, thank you. And finally, question three is please discuss an experience you have had when a project you were managing was not meeting goals and expectations and what you did to get that project back on track. Um, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I would say, um, we've had a couple of experiences, uh, here at APS. If you work in the, in the construction world, um, as I've been uh, working in the last few years, um, you know, there are, there are lots of challenges, um, and I think um, I will just use our um, I will use our solar uh, project as uh, a potential start. Actually, let me use um, I'm sorry. Uh, let me use I got a, I've got a lot of good examples here potentially, but um, uh, I'll, I'll go back to um, our Energy Works Michigan um, days where we were working to um, to install. Uh, renewable energy energy efficiency measures at K-12 schools across uh, Michigan. Um, so um, one of the challenges was figuring out how to uh, sort of equity, equitably distribute um, some of our uh, resources. And uh, there was a fair amount of um, planning involved in just getting uh, ramping up this program, uh, but ramping up this program in a way that we could equitably distribute um, the resources. Uh, so uh, very quickly, we had to work with um, partners at the state, partners um, locally here in, in terms of advisory committees and teams um, to develop a system for distributing resources in a time effective way. Um, and also providing sort of a sliding scale, equitable sort of distribution of these resources um, so that no one was um, sort of paying more than they, they could. Um, so I think um, building out sort of a series of uh, timetables to meet the overall deliverables was, um, was a real challenge with a statewide uh, program, um, but, uh, working with our, our team, we were able to uh, deliver and hit all of our targets. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Bing. Um, that concludes our interview portion for this evening. Um, we thank you for joining us this evening, and um, we will be in contact with you soon. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. Have a good Appreciate evening. The opportunity. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, Mr. Pluley, do we have our next uh, candidate here and ready? I do not see them. Okay. Um, but they were supposed to come in in a couple of minutes. So. Yep, seven fifteen. So. Oh, just okay. arrived. Just arrived. <laughs> Promote them now. Okay. Good evening, Mrs. McAtee, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good, it's good to see you again. Um, I'm Shante Lankford, if you don't recall, I'm the Executive Director of Human Resources. Good to see you again. Nice to see you as well. Thank you again for having me. Yes, so with me on the screen are probably two other familiar faces, uh, Jill Minnick, um, who is our Assistant Superintendent of Finance, I think I got that right. <laughs> and Emil Lazzano, who's our uh, executive director of Enviro, of what is your, your exact title, Emil? I mess it up every time. 
Oh, it, it keeps changing as capital projects at this okay. time. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, so this uh, evening, what we'll be doing is we'll allow you to have your uh, presentation that we know you have prepared for us. And we'll allot 20 to 30 minutes for you to be able to go ahead and do that. And then after that, we'll have three questions that we're going to ask of you. Um, and that's about 15 minutes um, that we're allotting for that time period. Do you have any questions before we get started? Um, no, I don't have any questions. Oh, actually, will this be recorded? Is it is it being recorded, yes. Okay. All right. Um, and will it be shared on the website, the, um, the school website? Um, it will be shared. I'm assuming we're going to share it through the website. Mr. Cluley, can you help me with that? I'm not, I wasn't exactly sure where it would be shared. Well, we'll be first putting it on the district's YouTube channel. So that'll be the first place. And then we'll probably also post it on the website, but it'll definitely be on the YouTube channel. Okay, great. I just had a few comments throughout my presentation saying like, if you're watching the recording, so I wanted to make sure. Yep. <laughs> okay. And we'll be able to see it. Thank you, Mr. Cluley. Whenever you are ready, Mrs. McAtee, you can go ahead and share your screen and get started. Okay, wonderful. Right. Okay, just checking to see if audio is good and if you can see the presentation. Okay, wonderful. All right, I will go ahead and get started. Um, maybe someone can keep time for me if I'm uh, if I'm going over, but I think it should be okay. Not a problem. I am doing. I am timekeeper, so I will let you know. Thanks, Shanta. All right. Um, yeah. Thank you again for having me this evening. I'm really excited to present my 30, 60, and 90 day entry plan for the director of environmental sustainability position with Ann Arbor Public Schools. So tonight's um, plan for the evening is to review um, an introduction of the position, as well as get to meet me a little bit more. Um, and then I will do some high level goals from the entry plan, as well as spotlight some of the deliverables that I'll be um, working on in the first three months, and then open up for the questions at the end. All right, just to provide a little bit about myself and where I'm coming from so that we can all connect. Um, I really think my education for sustainability career began um, in my early childhood as I had the opportunity to, to, um, to connect my land and my waterways um, as a youth. So I was able to you know, get engaged in garden projects as well as um, take part in the local 4-H program, learning how to raise my own animals. And it really sparked my um, interest and passion for education. And a couple years or many years later, I ended up um, doing my multiple subject teaching credential. Um, and that started to open up doors to be able to teach in public and private schools. Um, I'm just gonna switch the video there. And, um, and eventually it led to um, being able to work in nonprofit organizations in Southern Chile, where I led some education programs at two of their national parks. Um, which was a really exciting time of my life. Um, and then I wanted to continue to understand systems change work and I decided to pursue a Master of Education um, at the University of British Columbia up here in Vancouver, BC. Um, and at this time, I really got to get engaged with the city of Vancouver. They had just released their climate emergency action plan. And so a lot of my work that I worked on throughout my master's program was connected to that plan. Um, and since then, I've had the opportunity to really work in change management programs um, with both the university as well as with um, healthcare organizations across British Columbia. And it's really just this interconnection between uh, planetary health and education and human health that really drives my work every day. And yeah, I'm just really excited about this opportunity um, and to share a bit more about my plan. All right, so really before we begin, um, I just wanna take a moment to acknowledge and reflect on the land um, in which this call is taking place. Um, I'm joining you from the traditional and unceded territories of the Musqueam, the Squamish and the Tsleil-Waututh nations. Um, and yeah, I would just really encourage you all to, um, to learn about the traditional caretakers of the lands and that you live and work on. Um, I know that as I, move through this work of environmental sustainability, I'm constantly reflecting on my own practices um, around how I can improve my actions around reconciliation um, and really amplify and uplift diverse voices. 
So this is just a picture from the UBC garden. So an, an aerial shot of, um, you can see there's different, several different beds happening here. There's a children's garden. Um, they have a medicine garden here in the middle. And I got to work there a couple of summers ago. So I thought it'd be nice to include it. Um, I'll move through this slide pretty quickly as most of us on the call are aware of the position, but if you are watching the recording, I just wanted you to be able to pause and to read through the job description so that you have a full understanding of the conversation we're having tonight. Oops. And then as well with this slide, this is just um, a list of the responsibilities around this position. It really helped me to sort of shape out um, plan this plan and kind of understand some of the priority areas. Um, I might have missed a few or maybe some, some has been updated since the job description, but this is what I have so far. So again, if you wanna take a closer look, feel free to pause and take a look at this if you're watching the recording. Um, I'm going to assume that everyone on the call has seen this though. <laughs> All right, um, so really to get into the work of my entry work plan, it was based on a couple different things. Um, so I came to understand the environmental sustainability 8000 policy. I also began to familiarize myself with the teaching and learning mission um, at Ann Arbor Public Schools, as well as um, understanding the 2019 capital bond has been really helpful in this planning process. And then just through the interview process and reading about the job has been um, sort of what got me to this stage. I've reviewed a few other reports like the uh, Michigan Climate Action Plan. I believe it's still in draft form, but I read that one. And then um, the Ann Arbor Carbon Neutrality Plan. I've started to read that to familiarize myself with some of the goals in the community. Um, so let's just take a quick look here at what the first third, nope, oh, sorry. Okay, well, looks like it sped ahead, but the first 30 days are really about um, exploring my role and starting to identify some of those initial challenges and opportunities within the position. Um, I'm gonna start to familiarize myself with the entire community um, and really get to do an environmental scan to start to understand who, who's leading certain initiatives. Um, I'm really excited about some of those focus areas around transportation and um, food and um, energy and water to really learn about, you know, what are the initiatives that we're doing and what's working well. Um, I'll continue, to, I'll, I'll start connecting with some of the internal project stakeholders. Um, and yeah, just start to kind of get a feel for what are some of the current initiatives taking place, what has happened in the past and, you know, where are we going this year and in the future years. Um, so moving into the second month, things will really start to take shape around this time. I'll start to, um, you know, continue to build more relationships, but maybe reaching out with more external stakeholders. Um, and then I'll start to confirm some of the the planning stages around the, um, the Environmental Sustainability Management Plan, which I'm just calling the ESMP for short during this presentation. So I'll start to um, have some of those timelines and first steps of directing in place. Um, I'll also, during this time, I'll launch a baseline assessment study. Um, so I'll speak to that in, in the next couple slides. And then let's see. Yeah, so moving into um, the third month, this is when I'm starting to st see some of the results from the first two months of my, um, my environmental scan and some of the surveys that I'm doing. Um, so I'll start to be able to see some results that I can then plug into the planning stages for the, um, the ESMP. At this time, I can also provide an update to the Board of the Education um, on where we're at um, with that plan. And I'll continue to get a better feel for um, different sites and for people and who's leading projects. So let's dive into the first 30 days. I'm just gonna open up. All right. Um, there we go. So yeah, this first 30 days, I just wanted to go over um, a few of the highlighted um, deliverables and goals, and then I'll actually just spotlight one of them so we can take a bit of a deeper look at it. Um, and if you were able to, I have this two page report that kind of outlines those goals in more detail. So feel free to refer to that either before or after um, this session. So yeah, the first one on here is really around, um, I would like to design a green school survey um, as well as conduct an environmental scan and um, start some community um, interviews. So the, 
the survey is really to be able to measure environmental progress um, across our schools and to understand some of the priorities for staff and students around sustainability initiatives. Um, and so this survey will help to inform our annual report, but it will also um, inform um, the, the emerging um, environmental sustainability management plan. And then the second thing on here, um, I'll start to map out a plan for initial development of the greenhouse gas inventory. So I'm really curious in this stage of this first few months or first few weeks to find out, you know, what have we been collecting in the past? Um, what did that process look like? And did it work well? Do we need to improve it? Um, and that'll really kind of direct where I go in the next two months. Um, the next one on here is around the sustainability design guidelines. I've only had a quick peek at those um, just in a presentation that I watched. So I'm really excited to, to look at those and familiarize myself with those guidelines. Um, last year, I was able to help support some climate design um, climate resilience design guidelines, design guidelines for um, BC healthcare um, hospitals and long-term care homes. And we were really starting to talk about how do we plan for um, wildfires and floods and heat domes. And so I think it's really exciting that these guidelines are in place here um, within the community and that we'll be able to use them for our future builds or retrofit projects. Um, the community engagement process something that I would like to get off the ground, um, at least develop the process for it, and then have it be launched um, in the next couple of months. And I'll highlight that one here shortly. Um, so the local stakeholder mapping exercise this is somewhat similar to the environmental scan. And um, what I'll be doing here is really starting to understand who's leading certain initiatives, um, what are some of the best practices that we have going on within our schools. Um, and as a part of this, I'll also be doing a bit of a global scan to understand what are best practices around operations and green schools um, and program development. Um, and some of that work's already been done as I've worked on similar things in my master's and um, as well within healthcare and the University of British Columbia. So looking forward to being able to kind of bring that um, to this lens, but, all, but looking at more of a, a local setting. Um, something that's really important throughout this work, you know, in the first 30 days, but also every, every day is really making sure that we're ensuring um, that we are amplifying environmental justice and um, diversity and climate um, and um, inclusion work throughout our climate action plan. So I would, in the first 30 days, I plan to review the a AAPS equity plan um, and to really familiarize myself with any other resources that are available that HR can provide um, so that we make sure that, that we conclude that as a strategic priority within our um, environmental sustainability management plan. And then the last one on here is I'll be able to meet up with the task force um, to review what's been happening in this past year. I believe there's some updates that should be coming up in the spring of 2022. So maybe that's happening tonight. I don't know, but um, I, I do look forward to having those conversations to hear about, you know, what's the first year looked like and um, what, what kind of work has been developed and then to start to prioritize some of the goals moving forward. Um, let's move forward here. All right, so I just wanted to highlight this one um, deliverable just to look a little bit at kind of my process and what I'm thinking around it. Um, so I think that whenever we're, you know, developing a new plan, um, it's really important that we seek um, engagement from our community. So what I'm hoping to do through this process um, is to gather community input, input that will help kind of form the basis for the actions um, that, that will support the Environmental Sustainability Task Force and myself to really identify some of our strategic priorities, um, to identify any gaps and the focus areas that we want to um, have the plan be centered around. Um, and so what this will look like is I'm, I'm imagining a two to three month um, engagement process where we have different types of events um, and ways for the community to connect. So we could have an online forum, um, we could have you know, pop-up events or community dialogue sessions that could be virtual or in-person, um, and also building on other, you know, other events that have worked in the past for community engagement. I, I want to see what's worked well um, and try that out. So um, I 
right now, this is just around the development stage of what this would look like. And um, I would present a plan to the Board of Education um, and it would be co-created um, by myself and the task force and then hope to launch that within um, the first couple months of starting. All right, so just moving into the second month, um, uh, some of the deliverables here are pretty exciting because things are started, starting to take shape and kind of um, launching, just so to say. Um, so I want to get the Green School Survey launched. Um, and I think there's many ways to do that so that we do get um, participation across all, um, all school and staff, um, from students and staff. Um, there's different you know incentives that you can provide or you can have kind of teams of people who kind of support surveys so i would want to use some of those techniques that i've used um, with other with previous surveys um so depending on what i find from you know what's what's happening with the um, greenhouse gas emission reporting i would like to um, propose developing a framework and a timeline for um, emission reporting and that would be something that you know, I could work on with either energy managers or building administrators um, to roll out that process. And depending on whether we're adapting, creating something new or adapting from what we already have, um, if it's a new process, I would wanna go through you know, maybe providing workshops for those energy managers so that they understand and they have um, a clear idea of what, it, what I, my expectations are for reporting. Um, and just building off of that, this next point is really around, you know, how are we creating those linkages between the operational initiatives that we have going on? So, um, you know, our emissions reduction work or our um, environmentally sustainable or responsible infrastructure with our teaching and um, learning mission of the district. And this is where I'm, I'm going to start to kind of brainstorm and um, learn about what's already been happening and some new engagement activities that we can start implementing, um, which I'll speak to here shortly. At this time within the second month, um, it might be towards the end of the month, uh, I'd like to launch the community engagement process. So start to roll out some of those events. Um, and then um, I would hope to have the project charter in place that includes our planning milestones for the ESMP. And then continuing that work around environmental justice, um, I would want to start identifying strategic priorities that really demonstrate district leadership on climate change. Um, and so we can embed those into our plan early on. And then the last one here um, I'm excited about, it's on you know, really developing out a process for collecting our sustainability metrics and stories for an annual report that I will produce. Um, so it's always good to start that early on. Um, I've done a couple of reports before and it's, it takes a long time to collect all of that information, um, especially when you're you know, working across many different sites, um, which I'll speak to that one in month three as it develops a bit further. Um, yeah, I just wanted to highlight this one goal that I have, and this goal really seeks to be able to um, scale up some of those current practices that I'll learn about in the first month um, and start to embed environmental sustainability into our core teaching um, and curriculum, and then um, potentially introduce new change management campaigns. And these campaigns um, will hopefully motivate staff and students to take action, to really become thoughtful stewards and to, to help start to make some of those connections between um, our operations work with our learning mission. And so some of the ideas that I've thought of um, that could be helpful are like a bike to school week or maybe a local food Thursdays, um, thinking about sustainability committees at the staff and student level um, or leadership programs. Um, or maybe some campaigns around energy reduction. Um, there's lots of different things that I've done in the past with, um, with my two prior positions, and I think that they would work really well here, but I'm, I'm very curious to see what, what's already happening. So I think it'll be a bit of um, a, learning, a learning stage there. Um, so yeah, this is just an example of the Cool Campus Challenge. We ran this at UBC and it was um, to help save energy during the winter season. So I think things like this could work well. And um, this one will continue to be developed out further in the next couple of months. All right, and yeah, just landing on the third month here. Um, this is when things are, you know, 
starting to come together. Um, I'm seeing some of the results from the first two months. So I'll be analyzing those results from the Green School Survey and the scan and the interviews. Um, I'll be finalizing those details on the framework for emission reporting. Um, and then I'll start to um, assess feasibility of options for emission reduction projects. Um, <clears throat> and if there's any coaching or workshops needed for those energy managers or for those building administrators to, to need more support on the reporting process, this is probably when I would start to, to map out those dates and um, start to, yeah, to, to set those times up. Um, the community engagement process, that one will continue on for the next two months, so I won't touch base on that too much. Um, continuing yet yeah, from the prior slide, advancing the teaching and learning program area. So this is where I'll start to create a bit of a phase plan of things that we can start implementing right away. And then maybe some of our, our bigger um, projects that we want to implement, but we're not quite ready um, to add those to a future calendar year. Um, and then, yeah, just continuing to promote environmental justice work throughout, uh, making sure that that is at the forefront of this. Um, and then rolling out the story and metrics collection process for the annual report. Um, I've named it already, <laughs> maybe that's not a good idea, but I'm calling it the Environmental Performance Accountability Report. So this is a report that we would put out um, annually for the community, um, for the AAPS community, as well as the community at large. And then providing my first um, ESMP quarterly update to the Board of Education. So alongside, I just wanted to point out this report because it's it's an exciting piece of work that I, I really like to do. Um, so it, I think it's really important that when we are um, sharing, you know, our successes and our challenges and some of the future opportunities that we're able to not only highlight the metrics and the saving, the emission reductions work, but also some of the stories. Um, I wanna be able to capture stories from our students and our teachers, but also our other staff members like custodians and folks from the cafeteria and make sure that we can, you know, amplify those voices, um, but also empower them to tell their own story. And sort of what I'm seeing within this third month is developing out those templates. Um, and one of the ideas I have is to create a storytelling toolkit. So it can be, um, it can, I can either, you know, support teachers to host workshops or students to host workshops and they can walk people through the process of understanding why their story is important to tell um, and then how to go about it. Um, so that's a, something I'm really looking forward to. And I've done it before with um, four different health organizations across BC and it, it takes time. So it's, that's why it's here in the first few months. Um, and it's also a great way to just, for me to connect with people and to understand, um, you know, what is, what's happening and uh, to hear, to, to hear those stories. Oops. Oh, yeah, that's all. <laughs> and yeah, in summary, um, I just want to, you know, conclude that really my goals center around building relationships, um, kind of creating and planning for the future, as well as thinking about how we can um, achieve results to meet our targets that we set, um, which all focus on engagement and um, centering on equity and inclusion work, as well as um, developing change management initiatives and campaigns that inspire people to get involved. And yeah, with that, I just, I want to just end in gratitude. I'm really thankful that um, Ann Arbor Public Schools District has created this position for the community, for their staff and students, um, and, you know, making these changes within their infrastructure and really, you know, planning for um, climate resilience and um, supporting environmental education. So I would love to be a part of that. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how this work unfolds. All right, thank you so much, Mrs. McAtee. Um, if you want to grab some water, if you have it there, just to catch your breath a little bit, you're welcome to do so. We will jump right into questions when you're ready there. And again, we have um, 15 minutes and three questions for you. So just let me know when you're good to go. Okay, just one moment. I'm just gonna close off my PowerPoint here. No problem. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm set. <laughs> All right, thank you. So question number one, please describe how you approach managing institutional change in a complex environment with multiple internal and external stakeholders. 
Okay, excellent. Um, I really loved when you guys had the questions up last time, it was helpful, but I can, I'll try to remember. <laughs> um, yeah, so the question is around managing, um, can you repeat just one more time? Absolutely, absolutely. So please describe how you approach managing institutional change in a complex environment with multiple internal and external stakeholders. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so from my previous position, um, when I was working with the facilities and operations team within the BC healthcare organizations, um, I was serving four different healthcare organizations that were spread across um, the province of British Columbia. And I was working on um, the, my focus area was around leadership and innovation work. Um, so I was in charge of a, a network of over 250 people who were leading sustainability changes across, um, across the province in their, in their healthcare sites. Um, and I was only one person, right? And so I wasn't able to like to go to all these different sites and to be there to support them, but I was able to provide a platform for them to come together to learn certain skills um, that would help them bring their projects to fruition. Um, I also provided networking opportunities so that they could connect with people that were on their sites um, so that they were able to kind of understand how do I, how do I grow this idea and how do I spread it? Um, so I think for me, working within the healthcare sector was something completely new. Um, I have, I've only been in, in that field of work for a couple of years, but I was able to bring about my experience from um, my educational background and um, my experience learning about change management and to share it with, with, those, um, with those folks, with that audience. Um, so yeah, I look forward to being able to do something similar here. All right, thank you. And so question number two, Please discuss how you have approached environmental sustainability from the perspective of equity and inclusion and how you would include this in your work at AAPS. Thank you. Can you just say it one more time? <laughs> sure, no problem. Please discuss how you have approached environmental sustainability from the perspective of equity and inclusion and how you would include this in your work at AAPS. Perfect, thank you. Um, yeah, I think that it's really important as we think about um, advancing climate change, um, supporting climate change initiatives and how we can, you know, um, and advance environmental justice and be able to be there for our community that this is at the forefront of all of our work. Um, so, in prior positions, you know, I've considered um, making sure that all events are accessible um, and making sure that all voices can be heard. Um, so this can be seen through different, different events that I've led. But what I would really do with Ann Arbor Public Schools is um, through that community engagement process, making sure that we can make, we can um, include all people, that all events are accessible, that um, we can listen to those different priorities that they have and make sure that um, we're embedding them into our plan. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one way I would do it. All right, and the final question, please discuss an experience you have had when a project you were managing was not meeting goals and expectations. And what did you do to get the project back on track? Okay, um, that's a great question. Let me think about an example here. Okay, well, let's see. Yeah, okay, so thinking about a project that has, um, yeah, maybe kind of gone off track and needed some support. Um, just trying to come up with a, think of a good example from a work experience. Um, okay, there's one example where it might not fit this exact question perfectly, but um, I was working, when I was working down in Chile with the education programs, um, I was working at national parks as well as some conservation farms. And um, 
the mission around our work was really to promote regenerative agriculture um, and to work on um, conservation projects at the farm around restoration. And what I wanna hone in on here is one of the projects um, at one of the farms, they had decided that they would change their practices. Um, so we had you know, an organic practice with, um, with our blueberry crop. And then we decided to actually change that practice um, to being a more conventional. And it, it went against what we were wanting to do um, as, as, a, as an organization. Our organization was really working on supporting um, you know, regenerative agriculture and organic agriculture. And so uh, what we found is that, um, you know, the, what the farm manager had decided that he, you know, he was getting a little bit nervous about meeting his, um, I guess his quota and being able to make his, um, reach his goals with, with the crop. And um, the reason that it was affecting my programming is because I was leading education programs and bringing students there. And we were sort of teaching them this, you know, our mission around what, how we were growing certain things. And then it was going against what, um, what his, you know, new practices were. And so at the end of the day, we really had to have some conversations around, you know, understanding, um, um, you know, what were some of the struggles that he was having and, you know, why were those struggles coming up? And is there something that as a team, we could support him to, um, to you know, to be able to support his practices um, so that we could continue to do the organic production. Um, sorry, this is, a, this is a bit of a long story and I don't have it well mapped out, but, um, you know, it really just required coming and sitting down, understanding the, some of the stresses that, and the barriers that he had up against him and then finding a solution. Um, and then also just communicating what was important from my side of um, the work. And mine was really, you know, I'm working with these youth and I'm working with teachers um, and we're trying to embed certain practices and this is why it's important to me. So I think just by having that conversation um, and bringing in other stakeholders from the team and from outside to see, okay, how can we all try to meet this goal together is what, um, what really helped us come to, to kind of put that uh, project back on path. All right, well, thank you very much, um, Mrs. McAtee. This concludes our uh, interview portion. Um, we will be in contact with you uh, just for next steps. And again, we appreciate you joining us this evening and wish you a, a great evening. Thank you so much. It's great. All righty. You, you take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Joe. Bye, Neil.